Hey guys, Danny Johnson here, and I have a Yukon Denali, which we've really enjoyed. It's pretty much the same as the bigger trucks. And so today we're going to be comparing that to our new Toyota Tundra. And so they are pretty similar. Uh, one's a truck, one's an SUV, but the truck version of the Denali is pretty much the same. And so uh, the fact that we went with the higher trims here, the Platinum Edition for the Tundra and the Denali uh, are about the same. I was expecting to get about the same options with each of these, and they are pretty similar, but I'm just going to go over some things I noticed. Uh, first of all, the key fob is much better on the GM. So as you can see, it has remote start. Disregard the rear hatch because the truck wouldn't have that, but uh, it has a few things that the Toyota doesn't. Now, that might not be a big deal if you don't care about remote start, but uh, just as another option uh, thing to consider, uh, I went out to see how far it would reach on the Toyota, and it didn't quite go nearly as far as with the Yukon. So uh, we measured this one out, and it came out to about 138 feet, 139, 140 feet or so. And so that's probably plenty of range all you would ever need. But when we did test it on the Denali, I could not believe how far it reached. In fact, I was even able to remote start it from a huge distance away. So when we measured this one, it came in over 500 feet. So there is a difference in the remote fob. On this keyless entry, as soon as you hit the lock button and hold it, it will fold the mirrors in. Now on unlocking it, we'll do the same. We'll unfold the mirror, and if you keep holding it down, the windows will roll down. Now on the Tundra, when you hold the unlock or the lock button down, nothing else happens, uh, unlike the Yukon. The key, when you have it out and in the cylinder lock, does do some of the same things. Holding it uh, over all the way will unlock it and then roll the windows and the uh, sunroof down. And so it'll do that on the front windows and the sunroof, but not all windows. Uh, so it's similar, but the, to have the key out is not very common if you have the keyless entry. Something else I noticed is I really like the push buttons on the Yukon in order to open the doors. Now, on the Tundra, it does not have them on the back. However, I was lucky to get them at all. Uh, not a lot of Tundras have them. The Platinum does with these handles, so uh, I am glad I have them. Uh, that's a huge thing, not having to reach into your pocket for a key fob. Folding mirrors, I really like that option. And the Denali, what I like is when you push the button, even if it's off, it will operate. Uh, on the Tundra it won't. So you have the same button, but uh, it will not operate if the vehicle is not running. So it's kind of odd that this is a button they chose not to have power to. So you hit the button and nothing happens, yet when it's running, uh, it will. Uh, as far as mirrors go too, they both did come with heated mirrors, so that was nice. They both have blind spot indicator, and they both have the turn signal on the mirror. So those are all three nice options, and so both of them have that. But of course, now that the Tundra's running, I can push the button and actually have these retract. But sometimes you forget, or you're at the store, and you say, oh, I better fold my mirrors in, and it's like, oh, I shut the engine off, and so it's too late. So just something to mention. Uh, the Denali also as well does come with a heated steering wheel button, and that is a nice feature when it's cold. Uh, not a big deal. Toyota has plenty of buttons on there too. They all do similar things as the Denali. That was just one of the options I noticed that it didn't have. And so uh, on the Tundra, I did notice that this piece is kind of loose. As you're turning the steering wheel, you kind of catch that and notice that. Uh, one of the next things with the Tundra, and this might be stupid, but for me, when I put it in park, and I go into reverse, I have the camera come up, and I use that camera. First of all, as you turn left and right, the uh, little indicator doesn't move. On the Denali, it sweeps to tell you where you're going, but I like to put it in drive and then pull forward, and on the Yukon, the camera stays up for a few seconds. So I had to install this little bumper toy to know how far to go into the garage. Uh, so I like that. So opening the doors, you'll notice the doors seem so much heavier on the Yukon, that could be good or bad, but look at the size of these mirrors. Uh, going back to the mirrors here on the Tundra, they're huge, you're good with towing. The, the Denali's mirrors are so small, they look really nice, uh, but they have been pretty small when towing and, and doing things, so uh, that's just another option. Uh, the Denali has also some more electronic buttons for the lockouts. Uh, the child lock on the Tundra is just a switch, but you know what? <laughs> that works, and I'm fine with that. But you do have to open the door 
uh, to activate it or the Denali, just push a button. Uh, both of them have a trailer brake controller, which was big for me. Uh, the Yukon and the Tundra both have the parking assist and lane diversion thing, but the uh, Yukon also has where the pedals can come forward and back. I haven't used that a lot, but that might be a very important option to you. Um, if you or a partner might be shorter. So uh, seats and everything, no complaints there. The seats on the Yukon actually do have built-in vibration. So if you go out of the lane or someone's walking behind you, it kind of vibrates and it's kind of a nice feature. Buttons on the Tundra, simple. And you know, that's what I've enjoyed about the Toyota is it's simple and things don't seem to be breaking. Uh, of course, uh, the Tundra didn't come with any step bars. The Denali came factory with the step bars, which is a really nice function. Uh, getting in and out is tough, so I'm gonna go get a pair of those today. I have to basically uh, jump out of it because I don't wanna slide off the seat and ruin these seats. So for a truck, I'm really surprised on a Platinum Edition, it didn't have the running boards on the side. Uh, the Tundra also does not have a handle up in here on the driver side. Uh, the Denali does come with that, so that's uh, you know a little extra feature for getting in and out. I really don't use it a lot, but it's there. On the Denali, the columns up on the top here, and the Tundra would be if you have the bench seat. But as you hold the button down for tow haul, it'll stop your grade braking, which I really like. The Tundra doesn't do that, so it keeps down shifting on hills if I don't want it to. Um, as for the center console, the Tundra gives you plenty of room. It even has a little cutout for a cable to come through here, but they only gave you a cigarette lighter. So they needed to put one of the USBs in here so that uh, you can have this come up onto your lap with your phone plugged in. Instead, uh, the USB things are all up at the front, so your cable's coming from there to your phone when you're using your phone with Apple CarPlay and some things like that, which was a nice feature that it comes with. But uh, anyway, they probably should have put a USB thing in that in that call center console. Now the Yukon also has a very big area, but they gave you some more options here and not only uh, bags and things that can go in here, but there's a ledge up on it. So if you get optional trays, and this one came with this tray, the tray sits down in there to help divide up the space. And again, it has the USB uh, plugs down in here. So it comes out and then you have the phone coming right to your lap instead of across the front. Interiors were very nice on both of them. I really like the Platinum Edition with uh, the patterns that they used. Really nice materials. Uh, the Toyota one seems to be a little bit more of a higher quality leather. Uh, but the Yukon one is really nice too, and they even have a real wood. And so they've tried really hard as well, and I really like the interior on both of them. The seats are comfortable on both, and I really like having heated and ventilated seats. Both of them had that. One feature I really liked on the Toyota is that every time you start it up, it remembers what you had on last, and it just turns it back on for you. So I'm always pushing the button, uh, so it'll remember that, and I thought that that was cool. Uh, as for starting it up, one thing I want to mention on the Toyota is uh, just listen how loud it is because of the fan. Now that's really not a huge deal and I do like the Tundra's engine. It's a 32 valve dual overhead cam engine. You see how the shaft right there to the fan is connected so that uh, will spin on heat. The Denali does give you electric fan so it's a little bit quieter but you know the problem with the 6.2 is this. Did you hear that? I've already either collapsed the lifter or something. I'm gonna have to tear the whole engine apart and uh, the Yukon only has 94,000 miles on it. So it's very common with the cylinder deactivation and everything. The reliability on the two of them is far better on the Toyota. Okay, another thing here is uh, TV in the Denali, which is nice for the kids. It's a truck, so it doesn't really have it. Uh, the Sequoia probably would have, so you know we won't really compare it. Again, an SUV thing, I do like having the air vents in the roof. Uh, with the Tundra, it's just two small vents that are in the back, so if you close off the front vents, it will push more air to the back, but uh, it's you know kind of hard for the kids with air conditioning, but it does keep up. One of the major things for me is the Denali comes with a center uh, set of anchors for car seats. The Tundra is really nice and a lot of room, but that's one thing I noticed. They have the width and everything, but for some reason they did not go with anchors in the center seat. So your kids with car seats uh, have to either be on the outsides or be using the shoulder belt, which I'm not a big fan of. I really like the car seats going into the anchors. 
Okay, and so again, I know we're talking SUV versus truck and there are differences, but what sold us on the Tundra was how big it was on the inside. The Denali is also you know, large, it's a larger SUV, comes in about 55 inches in width, but the, the Tundra is a bit wider. And just look at the size of these rear doors and how much room there is in here for the kids. There's so much more room now between the car seat and my seat. Um, that makes a big difference. There's plenty of space inside to put extra bags and things. And again, just look at the size of those doors and going along with the doors too, they are so light, but yeah, you have so much extra room here. And so measuring it on the inside as well, if we look on the Tundra here, uh, we're coming up to basically 37 inches to my seat. This was in my wife's seating position up here, which is even a little farther forward and you're only, you know, 33 or so inches. Uh, the Tundra did come with 20 inch wheels and so did the Denali. However, the problem I had with the Denali, another quality thing is one of those rims cracked. And so I had to replace them. So we went from the 20 inch is, which this one still has a nice smooth ride, but on the Yukon, it was such a rough ride. The bigger sidewall on a smaller rim and a bigger tire really helped. Now, one of the other main differences on the Toyota Tundra, you'll notice it has six speeds. So as I flip through these, the Yukon has eight, and then some of them did come with six, but for the most part, they're eight speeds or 10 speeds. And so where that really makes a difference is when you're driving down the road and it has to downshift for a little bit more power, you'll notice in the Tundra that it downshifts quite a bit more because there's more spacing between each of the gears. And this is a big deal when you're towing because sometimes you need a little bit more power, but instead of just dropping down a little bit as it downshifts, it's gonna downshift quite a bit to get to that higher power range. So that is something notable between the difference on uh, this and the Denali's. Now the Tundra has the radar on it and it's kind of annoying because it'll slam on the brakes for you if you get too close to another car. It's a nice safety feature, but the Denali only gets that with the heads up display. So it is a, an option, but not on the one I have. One of my favorite features is the hidden compartment behind the screen. So that's what this button does. So when you push it, it will open up and inside it even has a place to charge your phone with a USB. So that's very helpful. It can also be locked during valet mode. Okay. The screen on the Tundra is very nice sized as well. The backup camera did seem kind of black and white though. So I don't know, maybe that's just mine. Anyway, this was just a quick comparison. I know there's more to cover, but this is my initial thoughts after driving the Tundra for a week or two now uh, and comparing it to what I'm used to with the Denali, both of them being about the same trim level and uh, just kind of seeing which options one has, which some don't. And also just kind of the differences, like the backup camera was a big one. It's like, you know, you wouldn't think about that, putting it into reverse and drive and seeing if the camera stays on. But it, uh, those little things are what I just wanted to mention in the video. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Check the video description. I'll put a playlist for more videos that are like this. And if you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe. Thanks, guys.